Jamal Murray with the assist to Nikola Jokic, who had a triple-double, 21 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists, zero turnovers. And the Denver Nuggets advance in the playoffs for the first time in 10 years, the 90-86 victory over the San Antonio Spurs in Game 7. Chris Miles, Billy King, Karan Butler here with you. What was most impressive by the Denver Nuggets down a stretch to you? Well, well, I, I was most impressed with Jamal Murray because of the fact they put the ball in his hands and he made the plays they needed to make to win the game. For a young kid to be in that experience, that position and to make that kind of play was just impressive because the game pressure got on him in the fourth quarter and he answered the bell. I think he's letting everybody know that they said he and Jokic are a dynamic duo, but he made the plays the floater. Uh, that, that's a shot you'll see on highlights for a long time because it was a big bucket that they needed at that time. It was huge, and it was a you know momentum booster. And talk about that energy in the mile high. I thought it was electrifying. But look, I thought Joker performance was just amazing. You know, having a triple double, zero turnovers. Like, bro, that's next level right there. That's big time. And look, he his, his responsibility was just so huge because you know when he don't score as much, we criticize him for that. So he was aggressive. And he also was doing an excellent job of rebounding the basketball and facilitating. Well, those two words that you just used there to describe Nikola Jokic, rebounding and facilitating, normally they don't go hand in hand. With him, they do. Because it's not just the outlet pass. Sometimes he brings the ball to court. Sometimes he throws full court passes. How much of a weapon is it when he grabs that many rebounds, 15 in the game, because of what he can do for the offense? I, I, look, he's, he's the system. You know, uh, and I think Coach Malone put him in a situation where you put him at the pinch post, he's able to exercise the right to, which we touched on, facilitate the basketball. If, you, if he rebounds the basketball, he's able to dribble the ball up and then initiate the offense. So it's just remarkable to see his uh, evolution, or him evolving as a basketball player, and the guys around him are excelling also. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this team, and... For them to get a win like this, Game 7, against an experienced team, a well-coached team, and Greg Popovich's team, it's going to do a lot for their confidence going further because if they were to lose this game, it affects them until next season. Now they win, they can build on it going into the next round, and so they've got, I mean, they've got a young group that grew up a lot tonight in this game. And they had a double-digit lead late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, and San Antonio went on a 14-5 run. Let's go to the final plays of the game and see how Denver was able to pull it out. First, we get Brent Forbes breaking out on the other end and getting the finish to make it a two-point game with less than a minute to go. But like you said, Jamal Murray, he's a guy, they have a lot of confidence with him and the ball in his hands. And right here, that's a shot he didn't go too far. It's a shot that he know, that he, he's taken before, so it was a comfortable shot. And, and a lot of guys wouldn't want to take that shot. And here's where you say defense wins championships. How about that? I believe that's Torrey Craig getting a hand on it, Jok Jokic getting the rebound. And yeah. then why not, why not foul here? I, I was yelling with 30 seconds when they get, you know, you got a foul, you got a foul. So it was just shocking that they didn't foul and allowed him to dribble the clock out and, uh, and to win the game. Yeah, I think Pop was yelling also, but you cannot hear nothing in that building. He, he ran outside of the coach's box to try to get in the ear of Patty Mills and Rudy Gay or someone to run up and get that foul. But when you have a veteran team, exactly. going situations, time on the clock, you, you should know that, right? Well, you, you should. And, and, that, and that's, you know, the coach is going to be yelling on that side, but you got Patty Mills, a veteran guy, Marcus, DeMar DeRozan, they all should know time score, understand that situation. It's not like if, if you reverse the roles and that was Denver, you could say it's yeah. a young team. But this is a veteran team. They shouldn't have to take Greg Popovich to be yelling, we need a foul in that situation. Yeah, it was a two-second difference, so you, you knew you had to foul to get yourself some time. I mean, look, we talked about this prior to the start of the series and the difference between Greg Popovich. We know his history as far as, you know, where he stands with most wins in, in NBA history and, mm. and also in, in postseason history as well, being atop that leaderboard. Mike Malone, it seemed as if his teams made the right, his players made the right decisions down the stretch. Is that uh, kudos to him and seeing how those guys were able to, to make all the right choices? Absolutely. I think he's on that short list when you talk about coach of the year. It's him, Coach Nurse, uh, Bud, Doc Rivers, and uh, Nate McMillan. So all of those guys done a remarkable job all season long. But to see 
him come out of out of timeout situations and get that lob for Murray. That was an excellent draw up, and I felt like that was the momentum swinger for those guys. And they just did a remarkable job of keeping their composure. Even when the game got close, I told you it wasn't going to get the four. It got the four. <laughs> you did. Yeah, it got the four, and he initially called the timeout, stopped it, and got things trending back in their direction. And, and the big thing is for a coach, they can do all the planning, preparation, and practice, but you can't create this pressure in game <laughs> experience. And for his guys to respond shows a lot of composure that he's put it put a, put a, upon them, and to understand the situation, you know, because you go through game situations in practice and you run it, but now you got the fans. It's game seven, and those guys went unexecuted. So I mean, Jamal Murray, he, a lot of credit goes to that young kid because a lot of kids in that situation yeah. don't want to be in that don't don't want to take that shot because they don't want to be the guy to say, well, you lost us the game because you turned it over, didn't want to take the shot. We were watching. Earlier, Ben Simmons talked about him. When he gets in that position, a lot of times he doesn't want to shoot the basketball. And so you saw a young kid tonight and did it. You use the term turnovers. And San Antonio Spurs had six. Denver Nuggets had just six. So both teams took care of the ball, and that's why you saw such a close game. Here's Greg Popovich. Good up. Appeared as though you were calling loudly for a foul at the end. What happened there? Was there a miscommunication? Well, obviously, he didn't hear anybody because he didn't foul. Anyone else? What contributed to the poor shooting start? Was it more their defense? Um, what they were you doing never know the answer to a question like that. It's always both. Coach, your uh, overall thoughts of the season? You know, group of new guys together, still get it to a game no, they seven. Did, first they round. did a good job. Uh, you know, I think that uh, they hung together real well, and you know, they just played the second seed and played them eleven times. It's you know five and six uh, in those 11 games. So they've they've done well for themselves, uh, having never played with each other a minute uh, before this season. And some of the young kids that developed in the D League came up and did a good job during the season. Uh, so I think they were really uh, quick to learn a new system and learn about each other. Uh, as the season progressed, so I think they did a really good job. It's always disappointing to lose, but uh, you have to congratulate the Nuggets. Uh, Michael uh, Malone did a great job, he and his staff, GM Connolly, putting the group together. Uh, they've been together a few years now and it's starting to show. Uh, there's a reason why they're second in the West, so congratulations to those guys. I thought they did a great job. Uh, Tonight was an odd game. I thought, you know, both teams set basketball back. Back in the first half. Um, get a glass of wine and watch it on TV. Uh, but it got better. Well, the best part for us was we hung in there. I thought we played aggressively enough to win for about a quarter and a half. Uh, we just didn't have the same pace and aggressiveness for about two and a half quarters and finally got it and then made it a basketball game. So that's disappointing, but nice to see that the group didn't hang their heads and came back in uh, and, and had an opportunity. But uh, Denver, they did a great job. I'm, I'm really happy for them in a strange sort of way. Your thoughts on Nikola Jokic? Uh, you had a great one in Tim Duncan. Um, I don't want to put him up there with Tim, but your thoughts yeah, on the way he plays the game? Quick. So yeah, a little bit too early that. for that, yeah. but your thoughts on the way Jokic plays the game? Uh, have you been in these sessions before? I've said this like 10 times, and I'm not writing your article for you. Ask one of your colleagues. He's magnificent. Magnificent. I'll just leave it at that. Pop. Pop, you mentioned. Yes. You you mentioned to Jabari that uh, this was a new team and you liked the way it came along. Are, are you kind of excited about a second year with the same group and and your contract is up? Do you expect to sign a new one? Uh, I I it won't be the same team because Dejounte Murray will come back, 
And, you know, he's our best defender, you know. Uh, he was our point guard when we lost him at the beginning of the year. That made it tough. Uh, well, Derek wasn't there either, was he? He was hurt, but Bryn Forbes was the point guard. Scared the hell out of him. Uh, but it helped him progress as a player for sure. So it'll be a, it'll be a, a different team just simply because DeJounte will uh, be back, assuming everything goes well. Uh, so we were expecting big things out of him. So the team will, you know, the team will be deeper, obviously, uh, next year. But be that as it may, the West is tough. There be, you know, there's other teams that didn't make the playoffs that are going to be hungry to get into the playoffs. It's a, it's a lot of good teams. Okay. Have a good weekend. <laughs>
didn't lack confidence. Eight for 13 in the second half. That includes that last three-pointer that almost went in. So really, he got hot when his team needed it most. But he had that confidence to keep taking the shots. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit later because here's Mike Malone. Michael, there's so much work that, that goes in, into this ever, ever since you got here. So when, when it happens, when you, when you win a series against a team like that, what is, what is sort of the first um, forefront emotion? You know, obviously, you're extremely happy and proud uh, of your guys. Uh, you know, to come so close the last two years and, and miss the playoff by one game uh, and to challenge every player in our roster to uh, come back and improve player and the buy-in, the commitment uh, all season long, all summer long coming into the year. And, uh, you know, this was a really hard-fought series. I mean, evenly matched. You know, I think if we played 20 times, it'd be 10 to 10. Uh, it's just a, that kind of a matchup. But uh, I love the grit, the resiliency, the toughness we played with tonight. And even late when they made their run, I mean, they're two veterans, DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge taking over the game. Um, we never lost our composure. And for a young team to step up and make big plays down the stretch, uh, Jamal Murray down the stretch was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, Nicola struggled to make shots in that fourth quarter, but he winds up going out and getting a triple-double. Um, but uh, the first reaction, Nick, is just really, really happy and proud of our guys. Uh, this is the first time Denver's won a game seven, I think, in 40 years. Um, so um, it's a hell of a moment. But as I told our players, enjoy it for a few minutes. It's a quick turnaround. We've got Portland in two days. Uh, so we'll turn the page and start getting ready for them tomorrow. Coach, the defensive effort tonight was obviously great for you guys. The improvement in that regard this season has been remarkable. Just wondering if you could reflect on your determination to make that a reality and the work your guys have put in to change the numbers and the narrative. Yeah, to me it was really simple. Um, the reason we have missed the playoff two years in a row was because we were a bottom five defensive team. Uh, an elite offensive team, but we couldn't guard anybody. We were last in three-point defense last year. So to go from 30th to first in three-point defense is remarkable. And that's our players buying in, committing, giving multiple efforts. So I take great pride in that, you know, the improvement, being a top 10 defense this year. Uh, and if you look at the seven games, the, the four games that we won, our defense was really good. The three games that we lost, we, we guarded nobody. And uh, we have a hell of a challenge waiting for us. You know, a team that's been resting, getting ready. And Damian Lillard right now is playing at a, a whole nother level. So, uh, you know, you enjoy this for a second and uh, you start thinking about Portland and all the challenges they present. But uh, proud of our guys and the defense was a big part of our success in the series and on the season as a whole. There was a, a lot of talk coming into the series about your guys' youth and, and kind of an experience and how it would look on a big stage when the brights were lighter. And Nicola comes out and just looks so poised throughout the series. To, to have your best player, who, who's also really young without a ton of playoff, any playoff experience, just have that calmness to him and, and that poise, can, can that trickle down to, to other guys on your roster? Well, you hope it does. I, I think it speaks to Nicola's greatness. I think it speaks to him uh, never being afraid of the moment or never being overwhelmed. You know, uh, like he always says, it's just basketball. Whether it's regular season game 54 or it's game seven, the end of the day, it's just basketball. And that's how he approaches it. Um, and everybody else is different. You know, they don't have Nicola's same personality. But anytime your best player has that kind of poise, leadership, um, that will definitely help the younger guys out. When they, when they, things aren't going our way and they can look to him and they see calmness under pressure and under duress, yeah, I think that's a great thing to have. And that's how leadership is shown in many different ways. Uh, and that's why Nicola is a leader for our team. You, right here, you never trailed, but it was never easy. Have you ever had a game where you led basically from start to finish that was full of such, I don't know, anxiety? <laughs> anxiety is a good word, kids. Um, you know, you get off to a great start. Our defense was just, you know, incredible, especially in that first half. Um, but we couldn't make a shot. So you, we, we were unable to take advantage of our defense because we were struggling to make shots. I think somebody told me, Pop said we set the game of basketball back 20 years. Um, but I was just happy our defense was in the game early, especially coming off of game six. 
Um, but we could never build a big enough lead because of our inability to shoot the ball. We, we go two of 20 from the three-point line tonight, uh, and you still find a way to win the game, which I give our guys a ton of credit for because a lot of times when you're not making shots, that takes away from your defensive intensity. And I never, I never felt that tonight. Our guys had a next play mentality. And uh, what a marked difference from game six to seven in terms of how we played physically, aggressive, and a hell of a lot more disciplined. Uh, Michael, you talked uh, the last couple of days in all season just about how the, the Nuggets have fought to get home court advantage. Have you ever seen a game end like that where, like, the Spurs couldn't hear whether or not to foul? Yeah, there was kind of uh, a crazy situation. Pop was on the court trying to get them to foul. They couldn't hear him. Uh, and, and our fans deserve so much credit. You know, one of the things I was just telling Josh Cronkey this, I, I, I love thinking about four years ago when I got this job and you looked in the stands, it was witness protection night. There was nobody here. Oh, really? In four years, building this from within, building it internally with really good people, high character people, to see where we've come in four years, to being a team that won a game seven at home and advancing to the second round for the first time in a while is incredible. You know, it, it, it's almost, uh, you know, surreal at times. And our fans have been phenomenal. The buy-in from our fans, that atmosphere tonight, every home game. We had the best home record in the NBA this year. Yes, because we have very good players. But more importantly, our fans showed up and made this a tremendously difficult place to play in. So great atmosphere, and we know the Nugget fans are going to bring it for round two. Mike, you talked about uh, the challenges of preparing for Portland, obviously a different kind of team than what you just faced. How can you even approach something like that in one day? Well, it's, um, you know, w one thing I can maybe allude to would be during the regular season, we had the best record and third best record in NBA history on the second night of back-to-backs. And, and, and that, to me, shows our, our team is able, able to turn the page, refocus, and understand who we're playing the next night. So hopefully we can use some of that getting ready for Portland because it is a challenge. They, they've been resting. They've been waiting for us or, or San Antonio, whoever won tonight. But the good thing for us is they're a division opponent. We played them four times. We know them well, and we know their personnel well. Still going to be a hell of a challenge, you know, uh, you know, but I think our guys are definitely excited for that challenge. Folks, you were saying before the game that you'd play Jokic 48 minutes if you had to. Uh, you came up about four and a half minutes short. I'll make uh, it up for it next uh, game. Uh, 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 was that maybe the most impressive thing about him tonight, that he hung in there against a very physical defensive approach from the opposition for almost 44 minutes? Yeah, it's, it's, um, we ask him to do so much. I mean, so 44 minutes in and of itself is pretty remarkable in a game seven um, for, for a guy that's never played th this many games. And then you think about how much we ask him to do offensively and defensively, being the centerpiece of our offense, a guy that makes plays for everybody throughout the night. And defensively, he's guarding every pick and roll or in the post. Um, I started questioning myself a little bit to start that fourth quarter. He missed his first three shots, and I said, you know what, maybe I should have gotten him out, got him a quick break, because maybe that fatigue is starting to kick in. But then I said, I can't take him out. <laughs> I got to keep him in the game, because even when he's not making shots, he has a tremendous impact on the game. He creates space for everybody else. Great players make all the, all the other players better around them, and that's what Nicola does every night. So uh, that's what we needed. I thought Mason Plumlee was terrific tonight off the bench, his best game of the series. I thought Malik Beasley's rebounding seven rebounds was terrific. Uh, late in the game, we had a possession. We got three or four straight offensive rebounds, which was a, a big part of that fourth quarter. So uh, great team win. I'm, I'm so happy and excited for our group. Coach, you generated uh, a lot of open looks in this series, and you guys just missed a ton of them off of great action. Are there things that you think you can shore up and improve on going into that series versus Portland? And also, uh, the other question is, going into these playoffs, all the, you, the coaching staff, the players all said about how this would go. We don't know. We don't know until we get there. What did you learn from the first playoff series? Oh, I, I think we learned that Nicole Jokic is a special player. You know, uh, if you, I, I knew he'd play well. I didn't know that he would average uh, near a triple double in seven games. Uh, you saw Jamal Murray, I think, you know, in the four wins, he was spectacular. The three losses, he struggled. And that's a constant uh, you know, conversation between he and I about his challenge to be a great player will be consistency. And tonight, on the biggest stage and the biggest game, we don't win that game without Jamal Murray. Big shot after big shot. I think he had 16 points in the second half. 
Um, so you learned that our guys understand what it's going to take. Uh, they're resilient, they're tough, and they believe in one another, which is really strong. Um, what was the first question? Forget it. Forget it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, one question at a time. Coach, you've kind of mentioned this a bit. I, I haven't. There's a lot of things I think maybe people nationally don't know about this team, but the one thing I've never heard people nationally say or talk about is the grit and resiliency. You just mentioned that. Can you kind of talk about this series and maybe how that um, was, was the best example of them bending often but not breaking? Yeah, I, I think, you know, in the, in the playoffs, it's such an important component, you know, uh, to have that grit and resiliency and toughness. Uh, it helped get us here, obviously, to win 54 games, uh, to have the best home record in the NBA, to go 12-1, and one, whatever it was, second night of back-to-backs. Um, but when you're playing against a veteran team like that with uh, arguably the greatest coach uh, in NBA history, um, you know, game one, we, we didn't perform. What I liked about it, though, we, we answered the bell in game two. Game three we, was my, maybe our worst game of the series. Game four and game five were great. Game six, what, what I was really proud of, Adam, was after game six, I didn't have to get, get up in front of our team and tell them all the things they didn't do. They already knew it. They owned it. Uh, before I even got into them, they, they knew that we weren't physical enough. They knew that we weren't disciplined enough. We weren't aggressive enough. And tonight, I think, was another great example of them learning from that and coming out there and doing it. I told them before the game, I said, there is no tomorrow. There's got to be no regrets. Don't wake up tomorrow morning and say, man, we weren't physical enough. Don't say we weren't aggressive enough. you got to leave it all out there. And, uh, and we did that from the jump ball all the way to the end. So, uh, and that's going to be really important moving on. You know, a division opponent, Portland, can't say enough about the job Terry Stotts has done and uh, the level that team is playing at right now. Appreciate it, everybody. Let's welcome in Joe Borgia, Senior Vice President, Replay and Referee Operations. Okay, during the second quarter of tonight's 76ers Raptors game, Fred Van Fleet was called for a blocking foul as he attempted to stop Ben Simmons from driving towards the basket. Joe, how close of a call was this and what made it a blocking foul on Van Fleet? Well, Chris, this was a very close call. As a matter of fact, Van Vliet initially was in a legal position. So to draw the offensive foul, he has to beat Simmons to the spot, and he has to be directly in his path. And what you're going to see here is he does that right here. However, he makes the mistake of moving forward and slightly to his left as Simmons makes a move around him, and therefore he ended up initiating the illegal contact, and that's why a blocking foul was called. During the third quarter of tonight's Spurs Nuggets game, LaMarcus Aldridge made a jump shot from the corner and wanted a foul call on Nikola Jokic. Joe, how does the term hand is part of the ball factor into this play? Chris, any part of the hand that is touching the ball is considered part of the ball. Therefore, a defender is allowed to hit it. And what you're going to see on this play, Aldridge, you see him go up for the shot. Jokic reaches in. Now watch what's here. We're going to freeze this play down here. His hand is on the ball, and that is the only part of the hand that Jokic hits. So in essence, Jokic hits the ball, even though Aldridge does feel it on his hand. But by rule, Jokic hit the ball, and therefore it is not a foul. It is a legal defensive play. Joe Borgia, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Chris. DeMar DeRozan started the game one for 10 from the field, but he finished with a flurry. Wasn't enough. We'll hear from Spurs and Nuggets players next on Game Time Live.